Good afternoon. I'm Yu Huang. I'm from Shanghai Tianke Engineering Consulting Company.、Uh, I'm an engineer, and we served on the Shanghai Center side、uh, many for the engineering. Maybe you are all the designers, and、uh, I want to share with you on the high-rise construction risk control technology and management, especially with the case study of、uh, Shanghai Center for this、uh, super high-rise、uh, building. So the Risk control technology is also a very heated topic. I hope that you will be interested in my topic. I have three agendas. First, overview of this、uh, project, and then. From the risk control and management、uh, perspective, I'd like to share with you on the main construction risks of Shanghai Center, and with this、uh, case study, I want to share with you. On the risk control, especially on the trust deal, as we all know, with、uh, the even higher rise uh, uh, buildings, uh, there are many in the downtown areas. So the、uh, neighboring geographical environments、uh, are very complicated, and、uh, long construction periods and、uh, very complex projects. And、uh, during our construction, we have the high altitude operations and also a lot of、uh, risks. So, in this、uh, perspective, the risk control and management is very important. And this is an overview of Shanghai Center. I think you are more familiar with it. And with this、uh, picture, I'd like to. Share with you it, that the Shanghai Center has eight regions, and for on top of each region, it has the、uh, trust layer. And on the other hand, from the perspective of the risk control and management, first we need to identify the risk of the project. For this、uh, building, we have to identify the risks and how we can control the, the risks. So this is a very important topic for us. First of all, according to our understanding, our key risk for Shanghai Center is its、uh, pile, and it uses a、uh, filing pile, and one thousand times fifty-six. And、uh, 86 of the depths of the hole. Since Shanghai has a soft soil basis, therefore the、uh, load or weight control is very difficult. And also, the、um, vertical level of the hole need to have good control. And also, the、uh, vertical control of the pile we need to have a good control because the length is 86 meters. How can we have a good control of that? It's very difficult. And also the casting in the hole is very hard to be controlled. This is the、uh, deep foundation, and、uh, 121 meters in diameter, and、uh, 31.1 meters in terms of、uh, digging depths. And、uh, we have this、uh, six circular concrete support, and its main risks. Uh, comes from, for example, such a big structure. It will have a safety issue, and it can have a deformation risks. How do we control that? And secondly, it may have the issue of water infiltration. So in the development process, we need to have a control of the water. And also, if there is a、uh, raining issues,、uh, it will have some、uh, influence to the surrounding areas. The another risk, as you can see in this photo, this is the extra large and super thick base plate concrete construction. The thickness is、uh, six meters, and、uh, the total is sixty thousand、uh, meters、uh, cubic meters. And at such a large scale casting of the concrete, I think the biggest risk is in the following areas. One. Is the internal external temperature control of the concrete because the temperature need to be controlled well so that the cracks will not be generated. Second, since the reinforced concrete is dense, very dense, so we need to have a very firm concrete casting. This is another risk. And the fourth largest risk comes from the large scale trust steel structure. This、uh, structure is shown in this photo, and the main 
risk it comes from the difficult uh, structure. They have large-scale megatrust construction and installation. And how can we control high accuracy of installation uh, is a key. And there are a lot of risks involved. Fifth risk is the uh, curtain wall steel support. This is a supporting system. And uh, it has uh, this kind of a hanging structure. It is also quite a light structure. And uh, it may have uh, some deformation or uh, some uh, issues. And uh, the biggest risk is the precise implementation of the curtain wall cantilever steel part. And the sixth risk, as you can see in this photo, this curtain wall is being installed. And there are some features of the curtain wall. When we design it, it is a kind of a revol a very rotatory uh, thing. It has 120 degree of uh, rotation. And also, the plate manufacturing is difficult. And uh, the uh, normal plate will be transformed to a three-dimensional plate. Therefore, the process precision and the manufacturing precision of the subgrid plates is a difficult issue. The external curtain wall is hanging out there. It's difficult to install. And also, it has altogether 623 meters in height. The structure is super high. Therefore, the structure safety and requirement for anti-water infiltration is very high. This risk also shows you uh, the photos of uh, unit curtain wall. It's different from traditional walls uh, ones. You can see it's a special way, cause a very diff big difficulty in the precision manufacturing. And in terms of design, our curtain wall manufacturer and a company um, come from the bio design perspective and come up with some solutions in terms of uh, energy saving, etc. In this photo, top two photos, so you can see the design uh, elements which can be adjusted later on. And the seventh risk is the safety management of the large scale equipment. While we make the building higher, the equipment nowadays are also larger in scale. Uh, we are not using M one two eight zero D large scale uh, lift, and all of these are uh, enabling very difficult operations. So we need to ensure safety in the operation. And in Shanghai, we may also experience typhoon. I uh, believe that earlier this year we have experienced some typhoons. So all these crane, a large crane operation safety will be a big issue in time of typhoon. And another one is the uh, operation safety. As you know, while we are installing uh, from uh, bottom to top, there can have some cross linking of three dimensional, and sometimes there's an operation of a super high. Uh, region, and they can have the uh, drop risks from the high places. And, and they can also have a fire a safety issue as well as the crashing issues, etc. These can also be uh, hidden risks. Over here, I would like to use a case of um, trust steel installation. Uh, what are the risks involved, and how do we conduct the risk control, etc. This photo, you can see the Shanghai Center uh, radio truss structure. The truss include several uh, area, several aspects. It includes a belt truss, and uh, as well as the uh, radio truss. The overall structure is very large. Based on the analysis of the trust, the total waste is above 7,000 tons, and altogether 1,400 above components, and 30,000 sets of uh, bolts and nuts. And this is the key uh, joint connections for the 
belt truss structure. In this photo, you can see as such. These are the joint connections with bolts and welding. In our design, we consider two types of connect joint connections. Here, these are high strength uh, joint connections, and other points we use a uh, weld uh, connection methods. This is the um, truss photo on site. This is our weldering of the uh, joint connection. This is a high intensity or high strength uh, joint connection method. There are more than 8,000 uh, sets of those. This is the uh, joint connection of the radio truss. You can see its joint connection methods are also in different two ways. One is a high uh, intensity one or high strength one, another is welding ones. This is the on site photo of the uplifting of a radio truss. This uh, circular area uh, in the middle uh, shows the bolt connection, and on the top, this circle and the bottom part. So, could they use the welding connection method? Just now, I briefly introduce you the truss structure as well as its uh, joint connection, etc. Based on this structure, situation, we believe uh, the risks are mainly in the following areas. First is the control of the uh, precision. The uh, components are large and heavy, and uh, there is a lot of uh, welding work involved. If precision is not uh, in good control, then it will have a bigger impact on installation. And we can do the major control measures at the following. We got some, some uh, component uh, control, cutting precision control, component installation precision control, component manufacturing size checking, and uh, pre-piecing uh, together or pre-assembling checking, etc. In this photo, you can see our overall truss structure components. And you can see the total weight is about 90 tons. And its plates are super thick one, about 60 to 120 millimeters. If you're not familiar with welding, such a super thick plate needs a lot of welding work. And also, you can see a feature that is, it has a lot of connection points uh, from front to end, uh, top to down, altogether 13 joint connections. So many of them, we need to ensure a good installation. Therefore, the processing precision requirements is very high. And in this photo, you can see we need to ensure the uh, precision can meet with our requirements. We have a control in the processing uh, process in the plant. This is the cutting precision control. And uh, when we assemble, we have good control. For example, like this photo on the left, uh, we need to have a good alignment in assembly. And also in this photo, you can see why the uh, workers are weldering because of the expansion in heat. Uh, uh, shrinking in the cold, there can be some deformation. So we also have control of that. This photo shows uh, we check and accept uh, the components. We have rechecking of the size and the precision, whether they meet with our requirement. Since our structure is complicated, we need to, from different angle, different perspective, uh, good inspection. Sometimes uh, it takes a long time for us to check and inspect. We need to have a three-dimensional uh, size checking to ensure the manufacturing precision is exactly what we want. And this is what we call the uh, U column, and we'll do the assembly at the side. For such a kind of uh, complicated structure, and we have to check the accuracy, and in case of any deviation, otherwise uh, it will be uh, quite inactive. As you can see, we have this uh, huge column, it's lying down, and uh, it has two sections for this uh, huge column. And we have uh, six um, structures or trusses to be assembled together. And as you can see, we have the ring truss and the uh, bottom and also uh, the top. And uh, this will affect uh, the accuracy of uh, this uh, assembly. And we also like to try to uh, analyze uh, the risks. For this uh, huge structure, we have uh, this uh, high um, 
altitude hoistry because it hasn't、uh, resulted in the structure. So we have to take into account of the stability, and、uh, we want to try to、uh, control the safety and also the on-site、uh, stability. And as、uh, so、you can see, when we are doing the hoistering for the column, and、uh, We'll try to hoist、uh, the truss after the column, so that、uh, we can try to achieve、uh, the local stability. And after the hoisting of、uh, the column, and we'll hoist the truss.、So、we'll try to achieve the stability. With this picture, it is saying that、uh, we'll also try to hoist on the.、Uh, Top layer, and with、uh, this picture, I think that、uh, this kind of、uh, order of hoistery is also very important. We need to achieve、uh, the temporary stability of this structure, and then there's the four node column and、uh, radio truss. And the、uh, ring truss. So within such kind of order, and the upper side of this、uh, ring truss, and with uh, this uh, controlling order, we want to achieve the safety and the stability of the entire structure, and certainly. And the most important risk is that we have a lot of super rich place, and it will result in the risk of the welding cracks. So this is a very、uh, significant risk in some shipping、uh, sector. We also had such cases、uh, of the cracking.、Uh, it might result from the steel, and、uh, as you know, we have the. A twenty millimeter or thirty millimeter of the、um, place,、uh, but for such kind of huge structure, it might reach one hundred twenty millimeters. So we need to、uh, try to control these risks of cracking. And、uh, what can we do? Have the following measures. What is more important? We need to control the quality of the material and also the heating, and the order of the welding. And、uh, for example. Uh, first, we'll do the welding, and then we'll try to connect it with the bolts. And we we have、uh, this out trigger truss. We have the、uh, up and the lower layers, and this is quite complicated in the Shanghai Center side. For the left picture. Uh, this is、uh, a very huge、uh, plate with the thickness of one hundred twenty millimeter. The welding length is about four meters, so it is quite、uh, challenging. And we need to well control the risk of the cracking, and we want to optimize it so that we can try to prevent the cracks. As we、well、know, if we have a, 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 a more openings, then it. It will not be quite beneficial, and we need to preheat it, and then we will do the welding. And also the、uh, order of this uh, optimized uh, welding process. And as you can see, this is releasing of the stress of welding because we have very huge stress of welding on this、uh, structure. We will do step one, the welding. And then do the bolting, so that we want to release the stress of a welding. And then we will do、um, the second uh, uh, point of a welding. And fourthly, we also have the risk of a failure of a connection. And we are concerned that、uh, it might have、uh, the failure of a connection because this is a huge structure. Now it will affect our schedule and、uh, the quality of the project. So we have the following measures. First, we need to control the precision of a single structure or component. And secondly. During the、uh, hoisting, we have to control the precision of the specific、uh, position, and thirdly, the reasonable、uh, type of the connection 
either uh, with a boat or etc. We need to have the reasonable order for our welding. We need to try to minimize the risks. As you can see, uh, for this uh, truss structure, it's quite complicated, and. Uh, we have a lot of discussions. Shall we do the uh, welding connection or the high strength of bolting? And uh, sometimes we need to that might consider the some artificial factors. And uh, we have to take into account of the reliability of the different uh, methods. So we had a mixed uh, model. For some part, uh, it is uh, the welding and. Uh, because it's not that challenging for the uh, precision. And we also have some parts with the bolting. First, we'll do the welding. And for the bolting area, we hope that we can release the stress. And after the welding, and for the bolting, we'll do the real-time monitoring. And uh, we can also do the processing of this uh, connection place. With this uh, picture, you can see that uh, we need to achieve the precision of the assembly. And uh, we will not do the welding immediately. And after the hoisting of the truss, and then we will try to um, do the um, bolting, and we hope that we can minimize the deformation. With this picture, it is saying that uh, we are optimizing the pr process and order of the welding. For the left picture, as you know, we have this huge column of Shanghai Center. And before the welding, uh, we need to do some analysis. And we have some slight adjustment. And uh, we have those uh, reverse the deformation method and the pre-elevation. And uh, because we have the uh, shrinking of after the welding, and we need to do the um, on-site monitoring and measurement. And uh, sometimes we find that there will be some shrinkage. So we have this uh, one, two, three millimeter. Uh, uh, reserve so that uh, after the welding to can achieve uh, the target value, and uh, we think that for this uh, project of a uh, Shanghai Center, this is a huge structure, and uh, during the construction, we also have uh, this kind of a uh, vertical structure, and uh, we have uh, this kind of outtrick truss. We need to release the stress. Otherwise, it will affect our construction. So how and when we will do the welding, and we need to do a very detailed analysis. And after the validation, we think that uh, we had uh, this kind of method of the simulation. And after the uh, last uh, truss, we will do the welding so that uh, we can release the stress first. And then we will do the welding in order to guarantee the safety of this uh, project. And this is my presentation. Thank you.